They asked me to make a video about meal prep, and I was like, I eat like a pirate. Why should I do that? But then I thought about it, and I think we have some great ideas for this video. So stay with me. We get a lot of questions from the Food52 community about meal prep. Uh, we're going to talk about some options for grains that you can make ahead of time, some options for hearty veggies, some protein options, and some sauce options. And that way, if you're the sort of person who does meal prep, you can mix and match throughout the week. And then we're going to bring people in from the office, they're going to taste it and let you know what they think. For the starchy components of our meal prep plan, I decided to do orzo, which is a little short pasta shape, farro, which is uh, like a hearty kind of ancient grain, and some simple white rice. These are just three examples. Of course, there's tons of other stuff you could do. You can make potatoes, you could work with quinoa, pearled barley, any other type of pasta shape, brown rice, is many, many possibilities, obviously. None of these took me more than 20 minutes. I make them ahead of time. I let them cool on these sheet trays. The pasta, I'll give it some olive oil so it doesn't stick. Same thing with the farro. And then you can pack it up in a little containers, whatever you have at home, and use it throughout the week. The farro, you can toss it, use it almost like a pasta salad with different vegetables and a vinaigrette and even throw some arugula in there. You can even reheat the farro and treat it like risotto rice and that works really well. We're actually gonna throw it on a sheet tray and make like a sheet tray dinner with the leftover farro and some other elements. Uh, pasta is easy to work with. Get a skillet with some butter, olive oil, garlic, vegetables, whatever you have left over, cheese, and just kind of spruce it up. One way to reuse the rice besides some obvious like fried rice options, any short grain white rice that you have made and you eat it with your dinner and there's leftover white rice, the next day if you put it in a pot and cover it by about an inch with water and you simmer it for about 45 minutes, you're going to end up with like a porridge basically, a savory porridge and you could add eggs into it, soy sauce, scallion, leftover meats or vegetables, whatever you want, it's delicious. Proteins. Lots of different options here, obviously. I chose to work with chickpeas as a vegetarian option, shrimp because it cooks so fast, and uh, chicken thighs because they're very forgiving. They stay moist even if you cook them and then reheat them again. If you don't want to use chickpeas, lentils is another good vegetarian option, tofu, obviously. Seafood gets a little bit tricky because certain fish are very delicate. I wouldn't cook like a flounder, let's say, ahead of time and then think I could reuse it throughout the week. You'd want something heartier, kind of like swordfish or monkfish, uh, anything that has a little bit more structure to it that it won't just shred and fall apart. With shrimp, they aren't actually my total favorite thing to cook ahead of time because a little bit of overcooking will really affect a shrimp. It'll, it'll totally change the texture of it. So, the first time through, you want to cook it until it's just barely done. And that way, if you have to use it again throughout the week, it'll still taste like shrimp. It won't taste like a uh, rubber band. I'm going to take a skillet, uh, neutral high heat oil like canola oil or grapeseed oil. Wait until the oil is extremely hot. Once it's in the pan in a single even layer, I'm not going to touch it at all for about a minute or two. And that's going to allow the shrimp to develop a little bit of caramelization and flavor on the bottom. And then I'm going to flip it once. I'm moving them around as little as possible. That's what's going to help them develop as much color as they can. This looks pretty nice. I'm going to start to flip them. Just a minute or two on either side and I'm going to take them right out. After you take them out of the pan, they're going to continue to carry over cooking for about 30 seconds or a minute as they cool down. As far as chicken is concerned, this could just as easily have been uh, certain cuts of pork, certain cuts of beef. Some cuts are going to reheat better than others. Each of these is very simple to cook. As I prepare them initially, I don't want to lean too heavily in one flavor direction. Like I wouldn't cover these in curry because then it might be harder to use them again later in the week. I'm just cooking everything very simply, olive oil, salt, and maybe some black pepper. The chickpeas I just sauteed in a skillet for a few minutes. The shrimp again is a few minutes. The chicken took a little bit longer, probably about a half an hour. But again, that's nothing. If you crisp the skin in the pan on the stove top, and then you can put the whole thing in the oven to finish cooking for about 15 minutes, it's very low lift. Once these are cooked and cooled, you can put them away in your fridge. I'd be careful, you wouldn't want to have something that's hot 
and put it in a bowl and like cover it in plastic and put it in the fridge because it might not cool down properly. You want to let these cool completely before you wrap them and put them away. For vegetables, I chose butternut squash, some simple cremini mushrooms, and broccoli. Now, you can go in a ton of different directions when it comes to vegetables, but for me, in terms of something you can make ahead and then use throughout the week, I'd want to choose something that's a little more hearty. Basically anything that would get too soggy, I would avoid cooking ahead of time because then you'll have trouble reheating it again throughout the week. Things like hardier leafy greens like uh, sauteed kale or Swiss chard would be totally fine. Any type of tougher squash, uh, cauliflower, carrots, there's a lot of different options basically. Personally, I love cooking vegetables on the stovetop using a high heat, getting some nice caramelization, and then taking them off before they get too soft. In the oven with vegetables, you know, a lot of recipes say cook it at 350 degrees for like 30 to 40 minutes. I would much rather have a higher temperature in the oven and then cook it for a little bit less amount of time. The broccoli and the butternut squash, I cooked at 450 degrees for about 15 minutes. And then you see this like little bit of uh, char and caramelization. I think it develops better flavor and it's not as soggy that way. So searing the mushrooms is gonna be very similar to searing the shrimp. Extremely hot pan, single even layer of the mushrooms so they don't overcrowd and steam. I'm not gonna add any salt to the mushrooms until they're almost completely done cooking. And I don't wanna draw them the moisture out because that will steam them rather than sear them. In terms of storage, lay them out on a sheet tray or anything flat until they're cool and put them away in any container you have. Uh, I'm not too concerned with storage when it comes to vegetables, as long as you're not crushing them, I'm sure it'll be fine. I wouldn't put anything acidic on top of these, like vinegar or lemon juice or anything, because that can change the color and texture as they sit in the fridge. A lot of roasted veggies are good uh, at room temperature or even straight out of the fridge is fine, but if you want to reheat them, uh, I'd say a sheet tray, and that's a good opportunity to use like 350 degrees when you just want to warm something through. It's always good to have a few sauces on hand. Very versatile, you can use them in many different ways. This is store-bought pesto, it looks great, it tastes great. I made a tahini vinaigrette over here, and this is a sriracha yogurt, Greek yogurt and sriracha basically. You can put little dollops on that to garnish your food. None of these took hardly any time at all, and if, in place of the pesto, if you have some green herbs in your herb drawer in your fridge and they're starting to go bad, you can just put them in the blender with some olive oil, a pinch of salt, some lemon, and make your own kind of herb condiment. In place of the tahini vinaigrette, you could put any vinaigrette you want. Miso carrot dressing is also really nice and versatile throughout the week. I really like using Greek yogurt as a sauce or a topping, condiment, that kind of thing. You can make sort of like a green goddess dressing with the Greek yogurt if you wanted to. A lot of different ways to go. These sauces are going to keep in your fridge all week basically and pull them out, use them to spruce up whatever it is you want to eat at home. They gave me this assignment to do like meal prep uh, video ideas. Bro. No, well, so I eat like a, like a terrible, I eat like a maniac. So this was actually really hard for me. All day long I'm cooking and I'm snacking, I'm cooking and I'm snacking. I never have to think ahead, I'm always full. Uh, but so what we decided to do was like three proteins made ahead, three grains, three vegetables, three sauces. And that way, if you're the sort of person who does meal prep, you can mix and match throughout the week. But I wanted to talk to two more normal people than me about <laughs> how you feed yourself, because I don't do a good job of it. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I like to roast vegetables um, sometimes, and then I'll pair it with greens. Mm -hmm. And so I'll do like, um, I'll go to the farmer's market, I'll get a lot of vegetables, and then throughout the week, I'll just like roast them, and then I'll have like lunch um, for the next day. Do you prep a bunch ahead of time and use it sort of throughout the week, or are you gotta go day by day? I go day by day. Okay. Yeah. And what about you? Yeah, I mean, the most meal prep I do is probably on a Sunday, mm -hmm. um, but it won't last all week, obviously. So um, I aim to like get us through maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. Um, so yeah, same idea, kind of a couple big sheets of vegetables, a rice or like wheat berry or 
fall, yeah. maybe. Um, and then like on top of salad, if things start to look a little sad towards yeah. the end of that. Yeah, I like the idea of something that you can cook ahead of time and then use it a couple more times throughout right. the week. So we referenced the white rice and then we turned it into congee. Oh, nice. uh, we made like a big sheet tray of butternut squash and shrimp and then folded them both in with pesto or like a pasta. So kind of like, so if you ate shrimp one night and you could repurpose it again the next night, that kind of thing. And this is uh, farro with broccoli and chickpeas and like a tahini sauce that we made. So it's Beautiful. components that you could have made even two or three days ahead of time and just kind of throw them all together. So you can taste and uh, see how I did. Everything should have like a vegetable component, a protein component, and then a starch component. Oh wow, it's really delicious. You have pesto, you said? Yeah. Well, we made a point that said like, Every single little last thing, you don't have to make from scratch, so that's store about pesto. Okay. No, nothing wrong with no that. No shame. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is precisely the type of lunch that I feel like 90% of our office would have on yeah. hand. So good. I love the whole almonds too for some texture. Mm. It's really good. Lunch. <laughs> yeah. Do you like to make sauces or condiments and keep them in the fridge? If we make a really good condiment or sauce at work, like for a photo shoot, and I take it home and I'll keep it for yeah. a week and I'll use it again and again. That has chicken and mushrooms mm -hmm. in it. There's a special uh, soy sauce that I've been using. It's, it's a little bit less salty than traditional soy sauce. It's called uh, shiro dashi, and it has bonito flakes yeah. in it. Yeah. So that's yeah. partly the reason why that tastes so good. Yeah, super flavorful. Cool. Uh, so I'm tempted, I was tempted to like crack a couple eggs in that too, so it's almost like egg drop soup vibes, but we ran out of time. <laughs> so one thing that we haven't talked about yet is like, obviously besides the things that you prep ahead of time, there are the things just sort of floating around in your fridge. So like a half an avocado or like a hunk of cheese, the almonds is another good example, or the arugula. Like there's the things that you have made specifically and then there's the things just kind of floating around in your life and between those, everyone should be able to throw something together. I love like the idea of mixing and matching. Mm -hmm. So you have like the foundation and then you can kind of be creative with whatever you find. Yeah, I think it would be fun as a family, like if you sat down and you were like, okay, like what are our vegetables for this week gonna be? And you could kind of come together and fight about it or choose whatever, what are the proteins gonna be? Yeah. You're so democratic, I'm like, this yeah. is all <laughs> uh, What I talked about today really just scratches the surface. This book that Amanda and Merrill wrote, The New Way to Dinner, really gets into it season by season, how you can make a main dish for your family and then use it again throughout the week. Put it in a taco, put it in a sandwich, use it in a soup, use it in a salad. A lot of ways to get creative and plan your meals for your family.